Yo, Grace Talk. Listen, I got something special for you today. I got a good friend of mine. His name is Brian Bentley. And God has really been using him and elevating him in the acting world or the movie business. And uh, we were talking one day and I decided to, to come and have him share a little bit of what God has been doing in the uh, what you call it, the active acting business. And so he's going to join us here in just a second. And he's going to- Brian, to what's you. up, brother? <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> man, it's such a blessing to have you on, man. Thank you, first of all, for doing this interview, man. I know this is your chill day. You took a few minutes out to hang out with me, and I appreciate that, man. And I know the people will, too. Hey, man, anything for you, my brother, man. We go back like Cadillacs on flats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what is that? Hot sauce and catfish, man. We go way back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I want to I wanna jump in this because I'm excited. Now, here's the title of this. It's, it's the, the, the my, my heart is this. Because, you know, from coming from a what you would call a Christian Pentecostal background, you know, we judged everything. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. And so there came a point where you decided to go into acting. So my first question, from your perspective, from your experience, does God give people grace to be actors? Such a, it's a big statement, but yeah. unpack that a little bit. Well, you know, in my opinion, yes, you know, and I, and not only that, I, that I, it's my opinion, but for me, jumping into acting wasn't something i just said i'm gonna be an actor i'm gonna boom no this was prayer and supplication and seeking the lord when this thing jumped on me because um and i know that you know a lot of my story because we came up around that time when i started acting yeah. but man i was uh comfortable comfortable i would say i mean i mean i was a deputy bailiff working for eight municipal court i was working on it for the, an attorney i was making good money you know well, just to, just to playing well, that, that brings me to this question to keep the flow going when did you decide you wanted to become an actor i mean was this as a kid or just one day god started dealing with you god just started dealing with me and and it was it's crazy be, but then when i it's one of the things it's crazy that you don't pay attention until later on for me it was later in life i was married with kids you know right. and when i look back at my life man i was literally when i look back my entire life was in some sort of entertainment wow. you know wow wow think I, and i never you don't think about it you know and i want to i don't want to say put the church as entertainment but i sang in the choir yeah yeah played the drums man and then, speaking uh, of that i have a vivid memory one time you was playing the drums and praising God. And you just jumped off the drums, man, and start praising him. You said, forget the beat, man. I'm going to praise the Lord. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, and it was it's stages. It was those different stages. Even even coming out of high school, I was in a, uh, a rap group. I was a dancer. Me and, you know, I have a childhood friend. He and I were dance partners. And we we would go around. I, I wasn't a club clubbing type of guy, but I always went to competitions. Anytime there was a competition and we went, I went, you know, so it was one of those things we, we would go, we would, we would have people coming from different cities to challenge us. So we would go and, you know, it was that kind of thing coming yeah. all the way up from teenage, you know, uh, one of our favorite uh, comedians at that time. And that was Martin Lawrence. Yeah. 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 And we, you know, and then a lot of my friends who, people who, or maybe, you know, see this video that know us right, uh, right. from Hollywood and things, they know, man, we would, uh, especially uh, the guys that I grew up in the hood, man, we would imitate, we would just, I would make up stuff. I would just go out and just, I, I didn't know it was um, improv. I didn't know the terminology, but I was improv and doing things. And, and a, a good friend of ours, a uh, mutual friend, Valerie and Craig Coleman, yeah, yeah. I used to go to their house and entertain them. <laughs> you know, I would uh, fight myself. I would, I'm would, i like, I'm going to run to the restroom. I go to the restroom and then I come out and I start fighting myself. <laughs> you know, I would do just crazy stuff, you know, just being silly, always silly in church. So you, you know, like, I remember, yeah, do, remember you doing that a few times. And you know, it's amazing that God takes those things that just seem so insignificant, but he's preparing yeah. us for the future, for our destiny. And we don't even recognize it. But, you know, that takes me to this point. Before we go any further, 
I want people yeah. to see a, a clip of this. Um, I guess it's a show, uh, a series that you're a part of. I think it's called Sprung. And uh, yeah. I want them to check out a small clip of this and we'll be right back. Governor's letting out a bunch of nonviolent inmates because of the coronavirus. What the hell's the coronavirus? The state has issued a shelter in place order. You need to stay in your home. But well, we've been in prison. We don't have a home. Yeah, I agree, it's a bit of a head scratcher. You can stay at my mom's place for a couple of nights. <laughs> wow, man, that, it looked like it's gonna be funny, somewhat entertaining. And so yeah. my question is how, now, here's what I wanna get into because I want people to kind of get some from this. You know, you. I saw how you started. Now, how do you get to a place where a project like that falls in your hand? Because I know it's like the music business, movie bit, movie business is no joke. You know what I mean? No. So to be in a role where you actually get camera time, that's a big deal. So how'd that kind of get in your direction? Well, and before I answer that, I should say part two of um, when you asked me how did I, you know, as far as acting, um, once I knew uh, it started from church place. I can tell you that. Uh, okay. It started in there. It's something uh, I remember uh, Vanessa, uh, Sister Vanessa from Revival Center. Uh, yeah, yeah, did. Sister Vanessa, man. Yeah. yeah, she wrote books and all that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. She wrote a book called Abundant Rain and she changed it to a play. And she, and I don't remember her telling me she was going to cast me in a play because I was always silly, you know. I was that kind of guy. That, you know, I always did you know, when I would, I would go to church members, you know, even though, you know, where we grew up and I would literally just joke around, just say jokes and do things. And I would do that all the time. And Vanessa ended up telling me about, she gonna write a play or was writing a play and she wanted to put me in it. But it was something after that is when things changed. Cause after we did that, this wasn't a regular play at church. Gotcha. We did gotcha. it in another venue and we had a couple of nights and um, for me, I, I got such an overwhelming response. I couldn't shake it. Hmm. And and it, it, it was one of those things, man, I'm, I'm telling you this, I was happy where I was being, you know, with the job I was doing and, the, you know, I was happy, man. And this was the kind of job that you, most of these positions that I was in, most men either retired or died hmm. on this job. You know, and 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 honestly, that's how I ended up getting that job is because another deputy bailiff that was, he was up in age, but he ended up passing away, and I was next up for that position. Well, know? this this I think would be good for the listeners. So, what how do, what what is it that makes you when you have a comfortable job, a comfortable position, you can even see yourself going up. But yet there's still something gnawing at you, annoying at you to to go in another different direction. What what causes you to pursue your dreams like that? You know, for me, it was I couldn't keep it off my mind. It was a pastor told me this. This is now I was acting at the time, but a pastor I ran into a didn't know this pastor. It was a storefront church. I happened to be out doing a play. Ran into this, uh, it was a, a white pastor, you know, and we started talking and he showed me around the church. But what things I asked him, this was so, it was very important to me. I think it was eating, eat, eating me up. I was going through something at the time because I was still struggling, I think, trying to figure out, um, am I supposed to be doing this at that time? You know, even though I felt like I was and I, I was confident that I was, but then I went through some trials mm. and it, and, and this is and, and and so Lord sent this man, a stranger man, and uh, I asked him. I said, you know, I, we got on. I, I don't know what made me ask him. I said, but I said, how do you, you know, as as a pastor? I said, how did you know right. that you were called to preach? What you know? What is it that made you that you know? And he said that, and I one thing I have to be honest, he told me three things, but mm -hmm. two things I don't remember two. <laughs> I, I'm I'm in fighting for years to remember that third one. But the two things he said, he said what he uh to him he thought was if it was something that you just can't shake, you know, it stays on you, it constantly you're constantly it's constantly on your mind. You you wake up and it's and you go to bed, you you know, you it's something about it. He said, that's one. And then he, he said, the other one was crazy. He said, if you see someone doing it and they're not doing it well or right, and it bothers you. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. That's what he and he was saying, and 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 he said, uh, and he told me a third one, and but when he told me that second one, I knew that was me because I was like, man, um, little things, you know, about it. So, um, but to get to where now, mind you, I've been doing this for twenty plus years. Mm, wow. Wow. 20 wow. plus years flew and, by man flew by wow yeah they've just fly, and you don't it don't feel like it does it man and you were you were there from the very beginning that's the crazy part about it that's why i love the fact that you know the struggles that i went through or some of them i should say um and but with that um i started off um i didn't know anything about acting so the first thing i did was once i felt like the lord gave me the okay and and I got the blessings from home to go and do it, you know, uh, for my wife, because I went, I was married and I told my wife about it. And and even at that time I said, no, don't give me an answer. This was, I feel that the Lord was leading me here, right, pray right. about it. And I went through every worst scenario I can think of mm -hmm. about pertaining to acting, you know? Um, and um, one of the things I based it off was a, a, a brother back home who was um, going, playing. Uh, he had went to the NBA and then he was out, but he decided to go back. So I watched his life mm. and I watched how mm. going over mm. the and being gone for months at a time and all that, but the ultimate goal, he ended up getting that phone call mm. and he would always pour into me, he would always speak. So even at that time, when, the, when I felt like this jumped on me, I felt like I had some sort of a blueprint Mm, in a sense right. to what it might be That's good. like once I got, you know, and I believe that the Lord, you know, allows some things to happen for me to see these things, you know. Now, now intersecting right there, that's, that's what I want to grab on is how have you seen the grace of God, both sides, open the door that you know it was him? but then yeah. closed doors too that, that you thought you were supposed to go through, but he closed it. So I want you to kind of address both sides if you got an example like that. Yeah, well, one of the things too, and I think it's in anything, especially when you're dealing with entertainment, uh, music and things like that, you know, um, you go in, um, especially as a child, uh, uh, someone who truly loves the Lord and, and looking to, um, and also, you know, I should say, trying to watch, carry yourself a certain way and be a certain way. And, 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 and at least for me at that right. moment, I was, you know, because I was so fired up and I'm happy that the Lord, you know, put me in a position and I was fighting a lot of religious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At that time. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of why I kind of got into whole, the, talking about it from a grace perspective, because I yeah. know a lot of times from the church perspective, sometimes they think of acting and the, the field of entertainment is forbidden. But yeah. see, God under grace desires us to live from our heart. Your yeah. personality is what God has given you. He don't desire that to be boxed up in the box every Sunday. He desires the world to see how he has made you and you've been made in his image and in his likeness. And so yeah. by you acting, I believe you bring God glory. So it ain't about me, man. So back to you. Um, the testimony has been great. I want to I want to say, OK, so you talked about grace. Now, give me one time where it, you know, it was a difficult, you know, like the door you felt like he closed the door. Like, Lord, I thought I was supposed to go this. But but yeah. but 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 after you went through, you realized why he closed that door. Yeah, man. And I can honestly say it was totally at this point. I know it. I know it back then, but I knew it. I know it more so now, 100 percent now. But man, it was so crazy. Things started moving at such a fast pace with I, I i ended up enrolling myself in the school when and um and when i went to school i um you know we would you know start learning a lot and not knowing that i was enrolling myself into theater you know at that time gotcha. but theater was the best thing that ever happened to me but i remember part of uh, a lot of our um homework studies they would send us to shows to go see and you know we would do reports on it and i saw my very first professional show outside of church play mm -hmm. okay and i okay. was like 
man, we ain't doing no acting. That ain't no acting. This right here is the real deal. You know, mm. that was my very first time ever seeing a professional show, and I, and it changed something. But then I saw that the Lord showed me that you're. I literally heard that you're doing the same thing. You're doing. I'm. I'm. He he showed me some things. But so after a while, I started booking, booking, booking. But then. Things was moving at such a fast pace. I get a call from, uh, at a time I had, uh, I was doing showcases and I went through an agency that I really wasn't a part of the agency, but I heard about the showcase. Right. And they kind of, I kind of was kind of like grandfathered in with them. Gotcha. All of a sudden I get a phone call. Um, Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I get, I got this showcase that moved me to, um, I got booked, picked up by an agency in California. But they wouldn't work with me unless I went to California. Okay. okay. And um, so now here I am. I was part time acting, working as a deputy bailiff, and now I had to make this big decision. Yeah. So when I finally um, made the decision, and I'll tell you the reason why some things after gotcha. this is, I made the decision to go to LA. As soon as I get there, I get a phone call from an agent back in Ohio telling me, <laughs> There's an audition that came in, and in this movie is called the Antoine Fisher story, and Denzel Washington is directing it, and and I'm like, she was like, and they're looking for an Antoine Fisher, and um, and since you're out there, you know, like, you can go straight over to the studios to um, turn your stuff in. Man, I'm geek. I'm sitting there like the Lord moving already. I just I ain't been out here in a week. Yeah. Right. It was so crazy. I went there, submitted my stuff. I'm waiting. Still ain't heard nothing. I'm calling back home, talking to the agent. No, I haven't heard anything. Go back, back and forth. Man, this went on for so long. Mm. Finally, I get to this phone call that my mother got sick. Mm. So, okay, yeah. My mom, yeah, my mom gets sick. She's back in Ohio. She ended up going in the hospital, and I ended up having to, ended up leaving all my stuff there. I drove out there now i drove left my car and everything me and another brother that i was with is vincent vincent yeah, ward yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. guy yeah man another trouble guy he was already out there getting getting work getting it done and uh the brother let me stay at his, at his place man till i found me a, you know because the goal was i was gonna stay there get me in my get settled in get my place and be, right. i wasn't even there a month let um, literally a month and i ended up having coming back home to deal with my mother, to find out she was going to be in the hospital longer than expected. And I'm flying back home, getting all my stuff, drove, drove back. And this was so crazy. I still hadn't learned yet. I got home. I'm mad. I'm, I'm just mad, you know. And uh, I ended up getting cast in another play while I was in. And while I was there, a director was talking during a break. And he was like, yeah, my friend just got in his Antoine Fisher movie. And I said, now this is a month that went by. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I said, they still casting? He was like, yeah. So I called the agent. Hey, whatever happened to that, you know? And she was like, I don't know, maybe you, you wanted to type. And I something just said, I don't know why. I was being sarcastic. And I said, do you even know who Denzel Washington is? You know, <laughs> she was like, she was like I, mean, I ain't been to the movies in so long. Man, I was crushed. Mm. She didn't even know who Denzel Washington was. And man, after I chilled out and I got into a a, a, a a place, the Lord started speaking to me, man. Mm -hmm. It was so crazy, man. He showed me that everything he I went through, he showed me what he could give me. It was like he was dangling it. Just mm -hmm. showed me. Wow. But my but but the way I went out of town was wrong. Mm -hmm. I was going through my marriage at the time gotcha. i was going through all, a lot of stuff at the time that i was really i used in it in the sense i didn't know it at the time yeah. but i was using all that as an excuse to get away mm. you know i want to interject something right here this is so important because i know we in the day where everything is instant success with instagram facebook and all of this and yeah. i'm not against that but what what I hear and what you're saying is that God had more concern about your character than he did your talent. 
And that's okay. important for people to know that, you know, we say, come follow Jesus. And I want you to follow Jesus, but God is not going to give you instant success because he mm -hmm. has to develop you for you to be able to handle what he wants to bless you with. All right, come now on. back to you, man. Go ahead. Yeah, man. And what I saw to it, it really was, it was, I, it was almost like I was forced to come back and deal with the things at hand before I could do anything else. And even though I was still in, still working a little, doing little things that I could, but the ultimate goal, which was my ultimate goal was film and TV. I was all, you know, and I thank God for the theater because it trained me, but, yeah. but it was what I was looking for. And I believe what the Lord showed me in a sense, he showed me in my own, in, a, in, his, in the only way, only way that I would say, in a way that I would understand, right, right. What's, you know, I had to deal with some things back home first. And once I got, once I dealt with some things, um, you know, I had to settle, I had to make a decision on yeah, some, right. um, some things yeah. before I could do anything else. And that right there, man, um, it was a learning lesson for me. It's not to say that I was going to get the role, I got you know, you. I'm not saying that, but it was, it was like, it was a learning lesson for me. And, and, and I have to say to the saints, you know, my story is different from your story, mm -hmm. but I know how, what God was showing me, uh, in the time that I was in and, but his grace was come still on. on. Come on, come on. The That's what grace, I want to hear. And all that I was going through Woo! his grace on me i was still working Come he on. still allowed me to work and still allowed me to do this and do that and book and 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 the, and the crazy part about it was my eyes it was i was i was a, a lot more focused mm. on and on and understanding like man this is this is more than just talent mm. you know this is so much more than talent this is so mm. much bigger than this and, and I'm going to be honest with you, man. It was so, so crazy because there's levels to this thing that when you, the, the further you go, man, I started, man, not making no money to, to travel to, from a, to a different city, only making enough money for gas, yeah, but, yeah. but, but being committed to go work in that city every single day and coming back and going back and coming back, man, I was doing this man for years. Mm. For years, just to break into another city, May, and then I then I became um, union. Okay, um, Big, come on, fresh. step up. I hear you. You see what I mean? I went from, you know, I, I'm doing community theater to doing uh, professional shows, but as a non-union actor, not getting none of the benefits, uh, monetary benefits, right. but but just a little bit of pay. Then I've been, but and then back then it was hard, man. You couldn't just join a union. You had to earn. You earn your points on stage. You had to earn so many points a week on stage. And back then it was 50 points. So you had to uh, work at least for every week you earn a point on stage. Okay. Wow. So you have to, so you, you know, you count 50 weeks yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to work. It took some time and uh, just to qualify to join, mm. you know? So, so once I became professional, then my, my salary changed, but it was still, low end I'm, I'm i'm just booking booking now i'm at a, of course now I've, I've built a a really strong resume throughout the years i can demand a certain amount yeah. i won't even look at a certain amount you know if it's not that not okay. being but no, you, you know you, you've earned that you've earned it. Yeah. yeah and so now when we now i'm trying to move into film and tv i'm doing this but at that particular time in ohio we weren't getting a lot of film and tv yeah. So I had to go out on the road and do theater shows just to stay in this and come do work several months, come back, work several months, come back. And I did that for years. And then uh, next thing you know, man, it's like uh, my whole goal was to get back to L.A. Yeah, every year it seemed like I'm trying to get back. Yeah, it was fading, 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 man. And I'm thinking about the agency. I'm thinking about all this. And um and I hope I'm answering this question when it comes to it. But when I got into the film and TV side, it's a whole different monster. I thought Man. I saw no, no, I thought I saw things on in theater. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, theater, theater is um, the you know, theater kind of presents itself right away. Um, you're talking about um, 
let's just just to be just brutally honest, man. Um, with, huh, 90, 90, 90 percent of uh, theater is really a lot of gay and lesbian. You deal mm-hmm. with a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I'm not, and, I, and and that's just my opinion on the percentage wise from what I see. And then, I, of course, you're talking from 20 years ago, coming all the way up. And then you're also talking about a brother who came out the hood, mm, yeah. who never experienced some things. And not only that, you in in church, yeah. and so you got all of this. And then you and and the first few several shows that I was doing, I worked with straight people, and all of a sudden I ran into this show, and I didn't know what to. I never saw this, man. It was like a whole different world outside of where, where we came from and how we came up. Mm. So it, it 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 did it it messed with me for a long time because I just wasn't used to it. I didn't know theater, man. You understand? Right. The, the theater that we did was in church. Yeah, right. So now <laughs> I'm jumping from doing church shows and I'm moving into you know some different. Even though there's some church shows that you know they might have a gay person in there right I got but you. in reality time that person was just playing you know you didn't now i see a person this is their lifestyle yeah i got you. On totally off the stage. yeah well, I and think, this whole- I, I was gonna say i think that's why it's important that you going back to the beginning i right, asked you mm-hmm. what made you pursue your dreams you have to know that god is leading you there because you're going to encounter things that you didn't even know was coming that you didn't even expect and it's yeah. out of your control in a lot of ways you know in yeah. church you can kind of control some things but when yeah. you're out there in the field man you have to walk like you know you you got to be considerate of other people now yeah. i know we could go on man we might have to do part two here's what i want to conclude asking you this question what's next for brian bentley man right now man god just blessed me again man um I have a, well, shoot, God's been blessing all year, man. Um, I have literally four films coming out next year that I just finished this year. Glory to God. um, This is probably going to be like, oh, man, I wanted to say this so bad. Um, But I guess, you know what? I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here, man. Right here. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, man. So, man, um, you're going to find me next year, man. I, I was blessed with a, a great role. I, um, I got cast in a LeBron James film. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. And I'm playing a, a, a really nice role opposite of Wood Harris. Um, um, oh, man. Uh, Caleb McLaughlin. Uh, people will know him from Stranger Things. He was the young kid black kid in Stranger Things. He's a teenager now, uh, or 20 year old, I would say now. Um, and uh, there's a, other, a lot of other faces that you'll see that's in that show. And then um, uh, I, I also just finished a Lifetime film um, that's gonna be out next year. Um, it's called A Rose for Her Grave. Mm. Um, let me see. I did an episode of uh, Mayor of Kingstown. That's uh, if anyone has Paramount Plus, I'll, I'll be on season two on that one. And um, plus, I know I just did another. Man, I know. Man, look, look at you sitting I over did. there like I just didn't did this. I did. Yeah. Look, you can't, it's you crazy, can't, you can't it's forget the small people, man. You know. And then I just got blessed, man. This is so crazy. It just just happened, man. Just a few days ago, man. And uh, but I just got I just booked a, a co-production, man. I'm going back to on stage, man. I'm wow. um, I'm doing an August Wilson piece, man. Um, called Seven Guitars. It's gonna be in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. and then uh, at Milwaukee Rep Theater, we're gonna leave there. We're going coming back to Ohio, man. Cincinnati Playoffs in the park. Stop so right I. There. I Coming back yeah. to Cincinnati, your story inspired me because I did. I remember your first play when you was in the competition. You ain't win nothing but a teddy bear. I remember. And <laughs> yeah. now to hear you say, man, I got this. I booked this. I booked it. See, the, that's the grace of God upon a person. And I want to end with encouraging the people this. In first, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, it says this. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Now, we typically just apply that to finances but he says you would abound in all things Mm. 
and for every good work. In other words, whatever God calls you to do, he's going to grace you so that you will abound in all things. And so, Oof. B, I know, I know you're on fire. Listen, man, because my time is running. I got more <sighs> things to do. I want to say that, um, man, I appreciate your friendship for, man, I don't even know how many years, man. You you blessed me, man. We go back to 10 speeds and the Lamaze Pontiac. The La Pontiac yeah, Lamaze, man. man. When he had yeah, this man. car, he wasn't driving. He gave it to me. I didn't have no car. Man, so we go way back. But I'm excited for where God has brought you because I have seen the progression. I've seen, See, yeah. it's about the journey, bro. So, yeah. Grace Talk people, share this, like this, tell somebody about it, be a blessing, let Bentley know you, you appreciate his uh, testimony. We love you. God bless you. Until